All right. Good afternoon. I think we are. Yes, we're live. Um, welcome to my afternoon broadcast. Thanks for joining me. Actually, let me just do this. That should be better. Okay. Welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I do these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's is number 376. I have to remember what I wrote. <laughs> I can remember what I wrote. I think 376. Just double. Yeah. No, three. Excuse me. 386. I keep tracking my. You know what? Look at the title. It says it there. This is, my, <laughs> this is my daily broadcast. It's a weekend one, so I'm more casual. And it's actually earlier than usual because I have other plans to go to, so I'm doing it an hour earlier than usual. So my 5 o'clock crowd is going to go, where are you? I'd like to see the replay. So today's topic is, um, originally I was going to write about um, how to tell if they're the one. And I went, no, that's, that's going to be much more, much more interesting to do how to tell if they're not the one. So today's topic <laughs> is how to tell if they're not the one. And there's going to be some obvious ones that you probably know anyway, but I want to get some subtleties and some principles out there so you understand what you might want to use as a uh, guidance system to know what to avoid. So this is going to be in service to you, I trust. Um, I was trusting you can hear me okay because I decided I'm not going to use the earbuds at the moment because I think my phone's um, earphone socket is on the fritz, so I'm losing contact. So hopefully you can hear me fine without them because I don't have them on me. So getting to the topic at hand. How to tell if they're not the one. Now, before I give you that, let me just state, I'm talking about in relationship, in case you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is where I talk about relationships, dating, masculine, feminine, men, women, all sorts of stuff like that. This topic is part of that theme. And um, do they have, oh, do they have any deal breaker habits or life choices? That's part of it too. You're getting ahead of the game. So thank you. Um, <laughs> so getting on track. So before I get to that though, this, this is actually born out of conversations with clients and friends, so this has got some relevance. And I spoke um, yesterday, I believe, yesterday, day before. I've had so many broadcasts, I forget which one's which, but I think yesterday I talked about um, the lack of, in, oh yes, it was yesterday, about the lack of, in, of investment people put into relationships where they're just going on a dating app and swipe and say yes to somebody versus doing any work like less of work than do to even writing a resume for a job or looking online for a car. It's like they're putting less effort into their relationship, their love life, their heart-centered work than they are into business and cars. It doesn't make sense. So on that note, there are some serious warning signs that were shot pretty early. And one of those is what was said by Michelangelo um, about do they have any deal breakers, habits or habits, deal breaker habits or life choices. And that absolutely clearly is a deal breaker. I mean, is a is a indicator they're not the one. However, yes, I'm going to put a however on this, because as much as there might be things you say, you know, I want someone who's going to be monogamous, loyal, um, doesn't smoke, is vegetarian or vegan, or all these other things. Your deal breaker list needs to be truly um, streamlined. Because you may have a list of deal breakers so long, so um, inclusive, that there's nobody on the planet could match you, could actually qualify with without having one of those deal breakers on their list. So my recommendation to you right now, if you have a deal, if you have a list of deal breakers, make sure they have impact and they're valuable, that they really mean something to you. Because for example, if you are a vegan who is doing it out of a um, a belief about the sanctity of animals, and I'm, I'm not, so I'm just you know, just to be honest. So dating somebody who, who likes to have barbecue and eat meat might not be an, would definitely be a deal breaker for you because that goes against your belief systems. So that's one of those, for example. Another one could be about monogamy and and cheating and polyamory because that's again, those are important deal breakers. But if you have a deal breaker about um, the way they put the toothpaste cap, if they put if they don't put the toothpaste cap on the toothpaste. That is no deal breaker. That's an annoyance, you can work that out. <laughs> also, deal breakers are only really when they're permanent mindsets because there are certain things that are malleable. You know, what what I hold true now in certain areas of my life and so the way I do certain things, four or five years ago I never did. Like, for example, like I can cook now much more than I could 10 years ago. Actually, 
20 years ago. So that's one of my positive things. So if you if you don't want to be with somebody who, for example, doesn't cook, they could learn or something like that. So what I'm saying is some of those deal breakers may not be really firm. So you want to get clear what are real deal breakers and what are ones that you really are putting on your wish list that you wish they weren't true, but they would be workable. That's, that's, one, that's one arena, so that's one piece. Second thing is, um, see this one came right up, okay. If they're too good to be true, there are plenty of people out there who put on a great show, and living in LA, you see that a lot. And people put on a persona, and there are you know, people drive around in these like, exotic cars and still living with their parents. So presentation <laughs> is a lot of what happens in this town. So be really clear about what you want in a relationship that is beyond looks alone. If you're looking for things that are, if somebody's not the one, they may, more, may be more in love with their body than you are. As in, they're more focused on working out and looking good for themselves in the mirror than they are looking good for you. That would be a deal breaker for me, in my book. It might not be for you, I'm just letting you know some ideas. But they're probably not the one if that's the case, actually. Let me switch off deal breakers getting to the one, because I'm realizing I'm splitting my focus here. So to be the one. Let me say this one. Um, and this one's one of these nuanced ones. In the conversation about meeting somebody, I'm, I'm trying to think how to approach someone. Let, let me put it this way. Some of the conversations I had recently with clients, and I talked about this on, so on Facebook Live, about um, submarining, zombieing, ghosting. That was three terms. And then on a separate one, I'll talk about gaslighting. Um, those three are terms about people disappearing in dating. Now, if you're, I would say if they're not, the, they're not the one if they keep running away. If they, but, and just by the way, career rate. Ghosting is where they basically vanish completely. Zombieing is where they, um, remind me, never remember. Submarining is where they disappear. These are all terms about dating, by the way. Submarining is where they disappear and then shot three months later as if nothing happened. And they sort of just presume like it just continues. Nothing, nothing happened at all. Zombieing is of a similar nature. And I forgot it what it was. You, have to watch, you know, watch that broadcast. That was a few days ago. Um, but bottom line is, if they're not willing to invest the time to get to know you, they're probably not the one. Yeah, that works. All right. So let me see the other ones that are in there because this this is really a, a counterpoint to the idea about finding the one. Because okay, let me, I'm going to go the other direction for a second. How to know if it's not about um, say it again. It is not about if they are the one or not. It's really about if you're the one or not. Ooh, mic drop. <laughs> the reason I'm putting that on the table is because so many people are looking for their other half, which is an American approach because none of us are half, we're actually whole. But then we look at this place of it like, we'll be fine when the right one shows up. They're the one, they're the perfect one. And personally, that's a, an error in approach. And it's a really mistaken error because it puts you in a place where you don't live your life fully. So my suggestion, and this is gonna be part of your homework. <laughs> I give homework every day. Tied to the fact that really, it's about being the one. Because when you are in a place, oh, that's what it was about. So I just, I just sort of laid it out in front of me now. So. When you put your life in gear and you put the investment of your skills, your focus, your energy in life, you get the help you need, you do all the work you want to be to be the best person you can be, you become the one, so to speak. And in so being, the quality of choices you make in a relationship transforms. It's easy when you're not doing the work to just swipe and hope for you meet somebody and they'll be fine and it might be okay. Yeah, likely not likely. If you do the work yourself and take care of yourself, put your, your focus on your self-support, self-love, self-respect, then you won't choose at that level. You'll actually raise the standards of what you choose. So the person who you're looking for will be of a higher caliber, a higher standard, a higher... expression than otherwise you would choose. So you, by changing, by raising your own standards and becoming your own best self, you're, you become the one, it's easy for you to meet the one. I'm leaving it there because that's, that's a whole other conversation I don't want to do in this broadcast, but I want to just put, the, put it on the table. So think about that as an option. If you're not actually taking care of yourself, exercising, eating right, 
um, doing, the, doing the work you're meant to do in the world, making peace with your family, living the right life, taking care of your finances, all those things. If you're not doing those things, there's homework for you. Because to really, to find the one, they may accept you where you are, but I highly recommend that you raise the standard so they can begin to have an easier job of it. Because the other thing is, if, if you're looking for the one, hopefully they're looking for you as the one they want as well. Because sometimes what happens is there's this mist of information where the one you're looking for isn't yours. Because they're not looking for you. And so, if you are seriously thinking about how I can find the one true love, the partner I want to have, the most amazing relationship, you've got to raise your standards. And that means raising your own standards in your life. Putting yourself first, doing the right things to take care of yourself, and to really focus your life in the direction you want to go in. That's a life change, I know, for many people. But it puts you in a place where you're not only not settling for less in your life, you won't settle for less in your relationships either. So that is a key lesson. I didn't expect to go there. Okay, I'm just sitting, I'm just sitting with this because I'm still looking back. If I want to go back to the title, because this is a different perspective, but I think hopefully it's going to give you some input. I mean, it, it's a it's a powerful lesson. And I feel that if you can do that, yeah, that's where it's going to go. Okay, so I'm 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 checking this out. Um, painful facts, opposites attract and help balance each other back towards neutral. Not always. Um, I, I, there is a, there is a chemical attraction for opposites, but for a healthy one, I think more and lot more. In fact, is want to find things where, where it's more of where you find people who have things in common with you than things that don't. Opposites attracting is not, in fact, not nine times out of ten, opposites attract is actually a lot less work. So, Rona, you disagree with me or with him, with that with Michael Andrew's comment? I'm not sure what you're responding to. Um, I believe. Thank you. Okay, yeah, you're on the same page, Rona. I, I had a feeling you might be. Common is the key, not to be exactly the same. You don't want to, you don't want to be um, a mirror. I mean, like a, a um, looking like looking in the mirror and going, oh, the same as I am. Well, not extreme opposites. Yes, I agree with you on that one, Michael Andrew. Because the thing is that you wouldn't be attracted to someone who's an extreme opposite because they're so different, you like, won't have the relativity to connect. So commonalities, as, as Rona said, are absolutely key because they are what gives you some common ground to communicate with somebody. If you can't communicate, it's hard to connect. If you can't connect, it's hard to have a relationship. So definitely having a... Um, yeah, right. Yeah, right, right. We all need our own things. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> and that, for me, is the piece of it. Is that because that's that's why I said what I said. Okay, thank you. You gave me back to where I was going. As I said before, about if you want to track the one, be the one. This is the point. The more you raise your standards in your own life, about taking care of yourself, doing things that make you feel whole, healthy, successful, prosperous, whatever that is, that drives you to be a bit, have a calling in your life. When you're in that place, the commonalities that are attracting then become matched because what happens is you're so clear about who you are and what you're about those common um, keys as you said there Rona will become a match for what you're looking for and you'll find someone in the same place and that is where you find the one damn that worked out well <laughs> came full circle okay cool so there you have it so I give you some ideas about what would prove they're not the one and how in fact by being the one you'll attract the one that is so okay <laughs> I said it's too, too loopy for that one. Um, so Michelangelo, if you want to, if you want an amazing partner, then earn it. Um, that's one way of putting it. And it's like basically the simple thing is if you want an amazing partner, be an amazing partner. That's how I'd say it. It's not earning it, it's being it. So with that, I think that summarizes it. It's really you want to be what, I mean, I'm just realizing all these different metaphors and titles coming through, which is, you know, be, the, be, the, be like the, what you want to attract. If you're not going to do what it takes to be that, don't bother trying. It ain't going to happen. So if you really want to have an amazing relationship, an amazing partnership, which you put the word amazing in there, then absolutely become amazing yourself. And that is the lesson of the day. <laughs> All right, I think I've made my point 17 times. Um, if you're in the area where you want to work on this, we're often a reflection of who... What was that, Rona? We're often a reflection of who comes to us. There is a certain gauge there. Um... So sometimes you'll be mirrored back to your you what your life is going, what's happening in your life by who's around you. You know they talk about in um, um, 
oh, I've forgotten the name of the book, about how your um, the quality of your life, the success of your life is based upon the, the five people you hang out with type of thing. That thematic is definitely a reflection, reflecting back to us who we are. So if you're looking around the people you're hanging out with and going, this isn't what I want, then raise your own standards, and then you'll raise your own circle of people you're around, and then you'll raise the quality of relationship you attract. So that answers that question, I think. So yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. So wrapping this up, because I'm actually trying to get out of here, because I've got a, an earlier um, event to go to this one. I'm doing an earlier broadcast than usual. Usually this is, by the way, usually this is 5 p.m. Pacific times when this runs, or I do this every day, um, seven days a week, and I have other plans today, so a bit earlier. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. If you are looking for help in the area of love and relationships, this is my speciality, in case you haven't figured that out, after doing 380 plus broadcasts of Facebook Live, which will also be on YouTube, by the way. Um, you can find that when you go to my website, which is barryselby.com. Click on the Let's Chat on the left, left hand side. There's an icon right there. So, well, thank you, Michelangelo. Yes, mahalo and aloha to you too. Um, so, they want help, go to my website, barryselby.com. Click on Let's Chat on the left hand side of the menu. That will sign you in for Discovery Session, my gift to you. Um, these broadcasts will be on always on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages of the Masculine, as well as on my Facebook uh, business page, because these are Facebook Lives, which is Barry Selby to Alter. Um, I think that's about it. It's a Saturday, so I'm a bit more relaxed and casual today. Thanks for the input. Thanks for the conversation. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast after I sign off, I'll answer them later. Um, thank you, Anthony. I appreciate the feedback. Yes. I appreciate you liking what I'm doing. From San Diego, you know, down the street. Um, again, you can find these broadcasts on my page because there are 380 plus of them now. It's a lot of content for you to help to have a more amazing relationship. And uh, you're welcome to that, Rona. Thanks for adding your two cents. <laughs> um, I think that's it. Oh, yeah, if anybody you know should watch this, please share it with them. That was the thing I was going to say. And you've got your homework, which is raising your standards. That's a life journey, I know. But get it started now. And I will see you again, uh, once again tomorrow, as always, next broadcast. Who knows what the topic will be. Take care of yourselves, and uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye.